Hi, my name's Sammy Kadak from Body and Birth Physiotherapy, and today I'm going to teach you how to squat for a healthy pelvic floor. Today I'd like to teach you about the importance of squatting, deep butt to the floor squatting that is, for pelvic and whole body health, as well as to give you some exercises and strategies to begin working toward a full squat without causing any harm to the knees, back or pelvic floor. Squatting is a very natural movement for toddlers and indeed many adults in cultures around the world. However, in most westernized cultures, it is a movement that has almost been completely lost from our daily repertoire. In a more natural setting, think one without any furniture or toilets, we would be squatting each time we went to the toilet. For working positions, if you think gathering and preparing food without a raised countertop, and even when just resting and chatting. The benefits of squatting for the body include maintaining joint mobility and health of the hips, knees, back and ankles, strengthening the muscles of the lower body, the butt muscles in particular, creating more space in the pelvis, which helps to restore length and strength to the pelvic floor muscles. It helps to prepare the body for childbirth and also allows for complete and efficient elimination of waste when toileting. However, because most of us have not squatted for the bulk of our lives, going straight into a deep squat can be at best challenging and at worst actually harmful to the knees and pelvic floor, especially if there are any pre-existing conditions such as prolapse. The squat that we are working towards, myself included, is one where the heels are flat on the ground, feet are pointing straight ahead and the shins remain as vertical as possible. Stretching the calf, hamstring, groin and hip muscles will also be very helpful in preparing your body for a deep squat. However, I'd like to show you two exercises that specifically help to progress you towards your squat. This first exercise is a great place to start and it is on your hands and knees. So the goal here is to achieve the position of the squat for the pelvis, hips, knees and ankles to assess and work on your joint mobility without subjecting the knees or the pelvic floor to any load just yet. So we're going to start on our hands and knees. Hands are roughly underneath the shoulders, knees are below the hips. And we've got the toes tucked under at the back. Start by oh, relaxing the abdomen and allowing the pelvis to untuck as much as possible. So just to be clear, this would be tucking and this is untucking. So while maintaining that untucked position of the pelvis, start to sit your bum back towards your heels as far as you can until you start to notice some of that tucking occurring. So this may be pretty early into the movement, but that's okay. And you might notice here that if you were to flip me up 90 degrees, I would be in a squatting position. So we're still getting the benefit of creating more space in the pelvic in the pelvis and lengthening for the pelvic floor muscles without that pressure. Once you find that available range for your pelvis and your lower back, you can then come down to rest onto your elbows and hang out here for one to two minutes. This is a great place for new mums with little babies to exercise and hang out with their babies at the same time. Um, so working up to one to two minutes at a time and multiple times throughout the day would be great. So three or four times a day. The second exercise is more of a loaded squat. So we get to work on some more of the strength aspects of the lower body, the glutes, and the pelvic floor. You will need a door handle or something to hold on to, preferably a door with a handle on either side. Um, but you can also use a banister, stair railing, a pole, or even a partner, if you trust them not to, not to let you fall backwards. So we're gonna start by facing the door, whatever you're holding on to, hand on either side and your feet are pointing straight ahead with the feet just a little bit wider than hip width. Start by sitting your bum back as if you were sitting into a chair, but maintaining a vertical shin, so not coming forward, but keeping it vertical, and then also maintaining the untucked position of your pelvis. So for me, if I start to sit down, this is as far as I can comfortably get with that untucked pelvis and neutral spine. If I start to go lower, then you'll see that my pelvis starts to tuck and my lower spine starts to round down as well. So 
So for this exercise, you can either do a slow movement down into that squat position and then slowly back up, or you can find that boundary of as far as you can get to and you can hold it there for up to a minute at a time. As you continue practicing this exercise, you should notice that you can get a little bit deeper into the squat, hold it a little bit longer without your muscles getting too tired. And you should also notice that the amount that you rely on your arms to hold you up and maintain your balances should decrease over time, so it should get easier. I like to practice going down into that squat and then seeing how easily I can come out of it without using my hands. And that's my personal way of practicing. The more frequently you do this exercise throughout the day, for example, three times a day would be a great start. You should notice more benefits and improvements in your pelvic health, your squat, and your joint health throughout your body. Keep in mind, however, that for some, achieving that deep squat all the way down to the floor may be more of a one or two year goal, or perhaps even a lifetime goal. But no matter what stage of progression you get to as you're working on this deep squat, you will still be reaping many of the benefits of the squat. Remember, progression, not perfection, is key. Please do keep in mind that these exercises should not cause any pain or discomfort. However, if you do have any concerns, please see a health professional to make sure that these exercises are right for you.